what's up everybody it's hey john i jabber opportunities non-stop and today i will be going over why bitcoin went to 52 to 53k over the weekend i will be covering some other macroeconomic news so stay tuned and check it out because it's quite important and you want to know what's going on so why did bitcoin go to 52k over the weekend in labor day well simply put it's because the president of El Salvador has bought 400 Bitcoins at around 50K value. So that increased the price up quickly to 52K. But then we started seeing a sell off and a plateau. And of course, as always, when you see a new peak up, you're going to see a sell off because that's how the market works. It goes up and it goes down. But the significant thing here is that we're seeing a country such as El Salvador actually use bitcoin as the new monetary system for their country they are still using the us dollar as a denomination but they are transitioning to a bitcoin market and the reason for that is because when you transfer money from out of the country to el salvador there are tons of fees and the el salvador president has stated that if they go into this new system, which they already are, the new system being Bitcoin, they can save $400 million in fees alone. That is a huge amount of money to be saved just from transferring money from one country to El Salvador. The reason why this is significant is because El Salvador is currently being the first country to adopt Bitcoin as a national currency and the first to adopt a decentralized monetary system this will be huge yes it'll be tumultuous it'll be very volatile in the interim but in the long term though it's going to be great for the el salvadoran people because as you know being a small country their economy is very volatile so when you have a stable bitcoin which is not stable right now either because there's tons of volatility but all the savings from the fees alone may just warrant the transition to Bitcoin. And of course, if Bitcoin increases in value, and in my opinion, I believe it will just because it is a finite asset. It's not something you could print out overnight. And it's not something you have to worry about policymakers saying, you know what, on a whim, hmm, let's print another few trillion dollars to do whatever I want. Well, with Bitcoin, it's a rules-based system. It's finite. If you want some more Bitcoins, you have to mine it. And then there's also the halving event for Bitcoin. So there is a lot of protection in place here. And at the same time, since this is a disruptive technology, it could potentially remove tons of financiers, financial markets, and financial middlemen. So what does that mean? And that means that you're going to see the old guard. They're going to rise up and they're going to fight this. They're going to push out news they're gonna push out agendas to fight against bitcoin because as you know it will be affecting their livelihood and you better believe these financiers and financial institutions they have tons of money in their war chest and they're going to do everything they can to dissuade people from using it or they will come into the market and dominate it and take it over and as you know, currently we are seeing on the flip side, we are seeing institutional money go into Bitcoin now. So as they say, if you can beat them, join them. And as you know, currently for Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in general, it is a wild, wild west. There are no rules and regulations for the most part. So if they want to come in, these financiers, banks and financiers, they could easily come in and buy it up and take control of the market. And there will be nothing you or I could do about it because it's a free market, literally. Currently, there is no government intervention. But in the future, there may be some rules and regulations. But for now, not really. And you have to keep in mind, if these institutions go into Bitcoin, you better believe they will be influencing the rules and regulation that comes to Bitcoin. So there are two scenarios here. One, they stay outside and they destroy bitcoin number two they come into bitcoin and they change the game and they rule it in terms of regulation with countries giving it laws and everything so 
those are, those are the possible two scenarios I see for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general. And of course, what is good or bad for Bitcoin, it's good or bad for Dogecoin. So let's go ahead and get to the charts now, okay? All right, let's check out the Dogecoin chart to see what's popping. Let's check it out here. Okay, so on a daily, we can see currently, Dogecoin isn't faring too well. It was around 39. And then all of a sudden we saw a flash crash all the way down to a low of, well, 29.5. That is a huge flash crash. The reason for that, it could be a number of reasons. It could be because El Salvador is buying Bitcoin and the shorts institution want to short it, incite some panic to disrupt Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general. It could be a plethora of reasons, but on the bright side is that we are still trading in a longer term uptrend. So what does that mean? That means this current pink line I just drew, right? Was a longer term uptrend line here. Yes, Dogecoin did flash crash below it, but it's still trading above it. So that means that I'll be watching around 22.845. That'll be the number I'll be watching for a bounce off of. If it can bounce off that, fantastic. If it cannot, then that could be a problem too. But on another note, we're seeing Dogecoin give a lower high. So what does that mean? The previous high was 35.53, and now the, the next high is gonna be 32.63, which is a lower high. If you're a Dogecoin bull, that is not what you want to see. What you want to see was a new high above 35.5. And now we're seeing the opposite of that. So this could be the continuation of a new downtrend. It could be. But again, we always have to wait a few days to see how it confirms and plays out. As of right now, me calling it like this is premature. Because we don't know how this will play out. Could this be a simple flash crash because of some bearish news, because of shorts coming in? Nobody knows right now because there is no news being issued at the moment here. So I'm kind of speculating in that sense, but being in the market as long as I have, that is usually how it works though. So we saw huge news over the weekend where El Salvador bought 400 Bitcoins, which is a huge amount of money to bolster their economic position in the world to make El Salvador a more stable country in terms of their monetary denomination they are still using the us dollar for the most part but they are starting to transition to bitcoin because of the cheaper fees and the removal of middlemen and as you know middlemen get a cut and do they do very much not really but they do like a cut though right and it increases your fees so the people are getting smart in El Salvador and they want to transition to it but at the same token there's lots of fear about it because well Lots of people in El Salvador are saying, hey, you know what? Bitcoin is very volatile. One day it's at 52K, the next day it's at 47K. I don't want to lose money like that. And that is understandable. It's not for everyone, but also people will go into it because they see also, you know what? If I get paid in Bitcoin instead of dollars, that means that this, my money could be a appreciating asset and also money at the same time. So you know what? It's a fantastic win-win. So currently Dogecoin is going through the Agora reaction ribbon, which is currently around 28.57 to about 25.5. That is a range. And we are currently at 25.01 as of this recording. And we are trading below the Agora reaction ribbon, which is a combination of moving averages. As you can see as well, with the RSI indicator below, we're seeing it kind of go back up from an oversold position, but instead, of, and it's still continuing to go up because this is the daily perspective here. And we need to cross the zero. So we're currently at about negative 11.880, which is fine because we're still climbing back up. But what you want to see if you're a Dogecoin bull, such as myself, we want to see the Dogecoin bulls make the RSI cross above zero and go into bullish territory. As of right now, it is not doing that. And of course, there, there will still be time for this to happen. Being that this is a daily chart, that means one day, one sticks. So we're gonna have to be patient to see how this plays out. But 
there's huge volatility from 3088 all the way to 295. We're seeing an 18.78% spread for a day. That has huge amounts of volatility. So what does that mean? That means in the next few days, you're gonna see more volatility because you're gonna see panic buyers and panic sellers and you're gonna see tons of day traders make their money in this volatility. That is what day traders do, and that is what they're best at. They are best at volatility. So what I would say to you, this is not financial advice by any means, but if you are a Dogecoin huddler, well, be a Dogecoin huddler. If you are a Dogecoin swing trader, then you know what? Then swing trade too, that's fine, right? No big deal. All I'm saying is that stick to your guns, okay? If you have weak hands, yeah, we can. Maybe you should have diamond hands, right? So you just need to give yourself that perspective to make sure you don't make any rash decisions to make yourself lose tons of money for no good reasons. Because the volatility will end in a few days. That's usually how it works. When you see a big drop or a big increase, you're gonna follow it up with volatility. But usually the volatility will be inside the range of 3088 all the way down to 29.5. We're seeing about a 10 cent range here in terms of trading here within that 10 cent range of trading that'll be the volatility so don't assume that if you buy it high and sell it low that's a terrible strategy so if you want to do anything i would say buy it low and sell it high if you want to day trade but at the same token just be careful okay volatility is how you lose money but it's also how you make lots of money in a short amount of time and do not forget we're seeing lots of people losing their benefits for unemployment 6.7 million people, I believe, when I last checked, lost their benefits yesterday on September 6, 2021 on Labor Day. So these people who lost their benefits for unemployment, man, I would say they're definitely gonna be a little weary in terms of trading cryptocurrency, right? That could explain why we're seeing a flash crash because these people who lost their benefits, are maybe they're freaking out and saying, oh my God, I gotta pay rent. I gotta put food on the table. I have some cryptocurrency. Let me get rid of this and make sure I can sustain my way of life by eating and having a roof over my head. And don't forget also, we have seen the federal courts throw out the eviction moratorium. It is no longer lawful to prevent people from getting evicted. And these landlords that petition for it, um, they are currently in the courtrooms filing tons of eviction notices so we're now we're seeing some very tumultuous times right now and this could be the very driver of why we're seeing a cryptocurrency flash crash because if you think about it rationally speaking for a second here if it's between food and a roof over your head or cryptocurrency i know i would pick i would pick the roof and food because that's what keeps you alive cryptocurrency is great it's a future but guess what it is just that the future I still need to eat today. I still need to live today to see that future. So that kind of, to, in, my, in my opinion, is some, is some speculation, but I believe that is the partial reason of why we're seeing this, in my opinion, because not everyone has tons of money extra left over. And I always tell folks, when you trade cryptocurrency, only trade what you can lose. But I know there are a great many people who do not follow that advice or their lifestyle and they go all in and they go hard and when it, when it happens well we see flash crashes so it's your boy hey john i jab our opportunities non-stop and i'm glad to have you come and join me today so if you like what i said today in any which way it helped you smash a like button if you're a new viewer i thank you so much hit that subscribe and notification bell and most importantly have an awesome day and i'll catch you on the next one